area for May's edition of uh, Green Fingered Tips. We're here at Swartz Nursery and the unique thing about Swartz Nursery is that they grow their own summer bedding and all the vegetable plants that you can buy in the garden centre. Not many places uh, do that so uh, uh, it's a, just a unique opportunity to have a look behind the scenes really. So we've got the, uh, the baler. Now all the compost uh, for the bedding plants goes in here on a large pallet. The machine unwraps the pallet and chovels it all up, makes it all nice because you get, sometimes get lumps in the uh, in the compost. Right. Chovels it all up, spits it out onto the uh, the conveyor belt, and then it travels along the conveyor belt into the pot filling machine. So oh, then we have okay. a extremely attractive young man put in uh, <laughs> pots into uh, uh, onto the conveyor belt. So the the packs go into the machine, and then the machine can drop compost on it, and then it has a brush that br brushes oh, the, right. the compost okay. off. The important thing with bedding plants and growing in general is everything's got to be exactly the same, so they all get the equal amounts of uh, growth. Yeah. You know, not one plant gets better treatment than another. They all get the same sort of treatment. So as it moves through the pot filling machine, the brush here sweeps off any excess uh, compost because there's excess compost on the top, very loose compost. A brush brushes it all off, so it makes it nice and flat, ready for the uh, transplanting machine. And uh, you will notice that the compost these days has a lot of fine wood pool. It's not pure compost anymore. The government wants us to use less compost and less peat. Um, it's got to be very, very fine for the transplanting machine to uh, work well with. In the early days, uh, they used to put uh, wood chips in and it used to play havoc with the uh, transplanting machine. It used to bend the needles. Oh, so right. um, what we've got now is uh, another chap that looks just like Matt earlier on. Uh, <laughs> he's put in the trays of plants. Now these are plug plants and they're very, very oh, small. The machine uh, oh, moves wow. across and it has a program. It's all a computer. Uh, it moves across. It knows what uh, pack sizes they are. Uh, it moves across, picks the plants up, very ginger I mean, these are very, very delicate plants. Mm. It picks them up with the, the needles and then uh, puts them, places them into the pots. I mean, this saves a lot of trouble. Yeah. And it's not taking people's jobs away, it's just making a better job. Because mm. one person can plant them probably deeper than another person, and one person can firm them in a lot more oh, than another person. Exactly so same. you start to get mm. little variations in the plants. By doing it this way, all the plants are absolutely the same, and you will right. see that later on. Okay. So, as they're being uh, transplanted with uh, in the transplanter, they're coming along the conveyor belt, and then at this point, because it's just simply looks like a green-leafed plant, yeah. uh, you have to have colour pictures in there to tell you exactly what colour they are. Because obviously, like, but these yeah. are petunias, and they come in various different colours, so it's uh, it's ideal to uh, stick the the colour picture in right now. Because it'll only be a week or two weeks time before these will be uh, on for sale. So it's a very very quick uh, turnaround. Yeah. So the final step stages is to go onto the trolleys and then they these get moved into uh, the, the growing area ready for selling. We'll, we'll go over and have a look at those uh, right now. Right. We've just come out of the growing area so Mark what area is this? Well this is the final stage of the whole process. We've seen the growing, the transplanting. Uh, this is the selling area. So this yeah. is what customers get to uh, see, the final product. Um, we looked at petunias uh, in there and just so ha happens that we're, we're next to red petunias. So from those little tiny plugs, yeah. they develop into these bigger size. And as you can see, all the plants are completely even. Mm. There's, uh, there's no smaller in immature plants. They're all at the same size, so you get a, a really, really good display. Um, Swartz has got a fabulous su uh, supply and, and selection of uh, bedding plants. There's uh, probably 70 odd different varieties of petunias. There's wow. uh, geraniums, um, there's basket and hang hanging basket plants, lobelia, all sorts of different yeah. things and um, you can also instead of 
getting uh, just green leafed uh, bedding plants. They do a lot of architectural plants like the uh, red leaf begonias and the cannas and the banana plants as well. Uh, yeah, there's bananas, red leaf bananas, green leaf bananas, cannas, any, uh, lots of different uh, architectural plants. Um, and also, uh, Swartzen are renowned for the selection of fuchsias, uh, bedding fuchsias. Yeah. Uh, there's trailing fuchsias, uh, bush fuchsias, uh, great for hanging baskets, great for uh, containers, but they are just simply, um, you know, for one year. Right, okay, that's so, interesting. So what's the plant of the month? Well, because fuchsias are, uh, summer fuchsias are just for one year, I've actually got plant of the month for May. Right. Is hardy fuchsia. Uh, these will come back year after year, and the great thing about hardy fuchsia is they'll give you the same amount of flower, the same colour mm. that you will get from bedding uh, fuchsias. Uh, you get those unusual, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous flowers, and masses of them, so you get real... So it's bee friendly then? It is bee friendly, it attracts the bees. This particular uh, variety is called Genie, um, right. which is the golden foliage, which I... I absolutely love um, the golden foliage. It ought to be planted in a sunny position to keep the golden foliage right. really nice and bright and yellow. As the uh, reddish new tips, and then you have the cerise purple and pink oh, flowers. Yeah. And the flowers actually show up very, very well against mm. the foliage. So it gives you a great display. Not too big, only two to three feet tall. So great for a container, great for a border. Um, but it, like I say, the bonus with this is it comes back year after year. All you do at the end of the season is just prune it back to almost nothing and it'll right. come up better and better each year. So the plant of the month for May is uh, Hardy Fuchsia and this is Hardy Fuchsia Genie. There's plenty of other varieties out there, uh, but uh, my choice is Genie. Oh, thank you, Mark. Is so, there, um Jobs of the month. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, any jobs oh, of the month? Yeah, jobs. Um, yeah, jobs of the month. Uh, this month is because we are into bedding season now. Is uh, the key thing with summer bedding is to keep them really uh, well fed and watered. Right. Uh, we are having rain today. I don't know whether you can hear it, uh, but it is raining today. So obviously you won't have to water today. But normally when it's quite sunny, uh, once they've established in the containers or the pots, they will need watering every single single day and probably feeding with a liquid feed at least once a week so you really need to keep on yeah. top of that the feeds that you get in the packs for the bedding plants only last for so long oh, you know right. for a couple of weeks uh, you can get fertilizer in the compost again that lasts for a couple of weeks four mm -hmm. weeks and then uh, you will need to liquid feed on a regular basis. Summer bedding is very, very greedy, likes a lot of fertiliser and it becomes very sad and tired if you don't uh, feed it. So you must uh, keep up with the feeding. Also, uh, because it's all soft growth, look out for those pesky green fly. They're Ooh. always on them and white fly as well. Just uh, keep spraying with a, a systemic insecticide if you can't see them uh, or a contact insecticide and that'll just keep them lush and looking great. Um, mm. Also, remembering, I'll, I'll do this uh, for uh, Swarkston. I'll just lean over here. What you, you tend to find is when you're having um, your bedding displays, whether it be baskets or pots, is you'll get old flowers. And all you do is you simply take those off. Oh, right. Very, very simple. Yeah. You keep taking those off and it, you'll just get a flurry and flurry. It'll just keep on sending flowers more. out. <coughs> and yeah. if you don't do that, they'll look shabby and drab and it uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, promote uh, new growth and, uh, and new mm -hmm. flower. So keep deadheading right the way through the year. Um, certain varieties will do it themselves, but um, it's always a nice, uh, gentle job uh, uh, taking the old dead heads off. So that's really all the right. uh, all the jobs for <coughs> for the month for May. That's lovely, Mark. So, uh, how do the viewers get in contact with you? Well, they, they can get in contact with me uh, the normal uh, way, which is uh, uh, Facebook's always a good one, yeah. a really, really good one. If they put into Facebook, uh, Mark Smith Garden Guru, they'll find my page, they'll find my contact details there. There's uh, numbers, email addresses, etc., etc., um, and it shows you all the projects that I've been involved in, all the photos. If they've got any problems, they can uh, send me a message, send me a photo and I can diagnose right. it on uh, future uh, shows or they can contact uh, Burton TV on their uh, email address uh, mm. or their telephone number and uh, likewise they can upload uh, videos or photos if it's 
videos it's got to be MPEG format yeah. and uh, and then again we can uh, have a look at those in future programs um, so that's the traditional way or if they want to find out from Swarkston uh, just what bedding plants they've got in at the moment they can contact Swarkston on 01332 700 800 and they can ask about the varieties that they've got in and things yeah. that they've seen on the show All right. oh, thank you very much Mark so that's the end of our May's edition of Green Finger Tips, and I hope you join us next time. Goodbye. And that's the end of our edition of Green Finger Tips for March. May. No, May. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an M in it. March? I don't know. June. No, it's May. No, May. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We've been saying May all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's the end, end of May. Green Pink. Green Pink for May. <laughs> for May. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Goodbye. How, how difficult can it be? How difficult can it be? And the cannas and the banana plants as well. So really, really banana plants. great <laughs> banana plants. So they're the ornamental bananas, uh, which are just grown for its leaf. <laughs> I just said banana. <laughs> why, why didn't I... <laughs> Why didn't I, I stop just, myself? Why did I, I have to say banana? And those needles, if they touch you, they've got the power to break your fingers. If she sneezes and misses it, it'll hit that rod and it'll stop it so it doesn't oh. fall over. Plants get too big. You can't actually do it by a machine, you have to do it by hand. Mm -hmm.